Welcome to our series, The 12 Dodecagram Types, where we briefly discuss each of the 12 ways that people connect with God based on dodecagram, a spiritual tool for a digital world. In this video, I'm going to discuss the altruist. Oh, you mean rich people who donate their money just to avoid paying higher taxes? Hit the like button and let's get started. Altruists are natural helpers, encouragers, and givers. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and the church does too. Now, let me clarify something from the start. The word altruist isn't being used here as a synonym for philanthropist or patron. It actually comes from a Latin word, alter, which means other. There he goes with his Latin again. Dude, welcome to the 21st century. In this way, the primary way that altruists connect with God is through service to others. In a word, altruists love God by loving others. And not surprisingly, of all types on dodecagram, they are the most self-sacrificing and the ones who care most deeply about other people. Drawing from the limbs, the altruists strive to implement and make use of whatever resources are available from their belief system as a way to offer love, hospitality, service, affection, and helping hands. Like these? Not those kinds of hands. In this way, altruists usually follow career paths that center on helping people. For instance, child services, community development, mental health, chaplaincy, or medical care. Speaking of which, perhaps the most fitting symbol of the altruist is the hospital. In fact, when it comes to Christianity, some scholars say it was Christians who invented the very concept of a hospital. It was in the 200s during a time of plague when a Christian bishop named Cyprian, who was from North Africa, encouraged his flock to begin offering hospitality, that is, medical care, to those who were outside of Christianity. Cyprian wrote, There's nothing remarkable about caring simply for our own. We must love others as well, doing good to everyone, not merely those who share our faith. A century later, in the 300s, there was another important Christian bishop named Basil who was from Turkey. Mmm, basil in Turkey. Sounds delicious. Seeing other people's needs around him, whether Christian or not, Basil, during a time of famine, devised a hospital that offered care and service to those who were in need so that the sick could be loved for not only in word, but also in deed. Now, unlike other hospital-like places that existed before, Basel's Christian convictions led him to create a legit hospital staff who weren't trained in a theological seminary. His hospital differed from others in three important ways. First, it allowed patients to stay on site the whole length of their treatment. Julius, I know you were just trampled by a war elephant and every bone in your body is broken, but I'm gonna need you to walk back to your house in between treatments. Second, it allowed trained medical staff to make an actual diagnosis and offer an actual treatment. Macrina, these bad boys work every time. Will that be salt water or freshwater leeches? Third, it allowed patients to be cured for free. Valentina, it's under your dirt poor and unemployed, but I'm not pulling that ax out of your torso until you cough up some denarii. This tradition of Christians creating institutions that help and serve others continues today, whether in the form of hospitals, clinics, community centers, food banks, youth homes, missions, career placement services, or ends. And when it comes to the people who are most active in these spaces, history is full of altruists who use their faith to help others, whether William and Catherine Booth, Martin de Porres, Florence Nightingale, or Mother Teresa. Take Martin de Porres or Martin de Porres, a Dominican lay brother from Peru who was active in the early 1600s. He was an incredible example of an altruist who created both an orphanage and a children's hospital. He was constantly getting into trouble with his supervisor because he would go outside of the monastery walls, find people who were sick, and bring them back for the monastery to care for. Yeah, Martin, I know the church is supposed to take care of the poor and sick, but I found that it's better for my faith if I just concentrate on myself. As you can see, we owe altruists a debt of gratitude since they are almost always on the front lines, putting their beliefs into practice, even at their own expense. They are the kind of people who know that sometimes the best way to love God is by loving others. In conclusion, if you like this video on the altruist, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to take the free quiz at dodecagram.com to learn which type you are. I look forward to seeing you in the next video on the 12 dodecagram types.